Hello, welcome to Worship on the Dane and Trent Circuit YouTube channel. It's good to be able to join together in worship on this third Sunday of Easter. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. This is the good news. Once we were no people. Now we are God's people. Alleluia. Christ is risen. We join together in our first hymn. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you that we can worship you, not simply as the crucified Christ, but as our risen Lord and Saviour. We praise you that death was not the end, but a new beginning. We praise you for this time of joy, thanksgiving and rejoicing, a time that speaks of victory, renewal and hope. For the great message of Easter, that has spoken to countless people across the ages and that continues to speak to us today. Lord, we bring you our worship. Lord, we are in awe and wonder of all that you have done and all that you have created. We marvel at the natural world and your hand in creation as we celebrate new life emerging all around. Yet, Lord, we recognise there are times when we have failed to be good stewards of the resources you have given us. We have missed opportunities to speak of you and point others to your message of love and grace. We pause as we take a moment to ask God's forgiveness for our own failings.
Lord, in your mercy you forgive each one who are truly sorry. Thanks be to God. Amen. Psalm 4 Evening Prayer for Help Answer me when I pray, O God my Defender. When I was in trouble, you helped me. Be kind to me now and hear my prayer. How long will you people insult me? How long will you love what is worthless and go after what is false? Remember that the Lord has chosen the righteous for his own and he hears me when I call to him. Tremble with fear and stop sinning. Think deeply about this when you lie in silence on your beds. Offer the right sacrifices to the Lord and put your trust in him. There are many who pray, Give us more blessings, O Lord. Look on us with kindness. But the joy that you have given me is more than they will ever have with all their corn and wine. When I lie down, I go to sleep in peace. You alone, O Lord, keep me perfectly safe. Amen. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that, as, that it is I, myself. Touch me, and see, for ghosts do not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while in their joy they were disbelieving, and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name of all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. form a big part of our everyday lives. They're part of our everyday language. They might start when we ask ourselves first thing in the morning, what shall I wear today? Or, I wonder what the weather's like outside. 
In our house, the questions are often practical, like, have we got what we need to make dinner tonight? Or, have you switched the heating off? Questions sometimes are an inquiry which help us to learn a new skill or some new fact. There seem to be lots of quiz shows on the TV testing the knowledge of contestants, demanding factual answers to some easy and some very obscure questions. We read accounts in the New Testament of the disciples of Jesus often asking questions, trying to understand a situation. In the Gospel reading today, which recounts one of the appearances which Jesus made to his disciples after his resurrection, we hear the disciples were together, deliberating over the news that the two walkers on the Emmaus Road had brought. They had realised that Jesus had been journeying with them and sharing bread. This time it was Jesus who asked the questions as he suddenly appeared in the room. Sometimes the questions which we are asked are more probing. They touch our emotions, demand answers which might be painful to speak about. Sometimes we don't realise how we feel about something until we're asked. The nature of Jesus' questions in the passage from Luke touched a deeper chord. Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? In some ways, one might say the disciples and others were human and had every right to be troubled after the trauma they'd experienced days earlier, seeing the agony of Jesus dying on the cross, the vulnerability they felt because they were his followers. There was the empty tomb and reports of a risen Christ. Some had seen him. Now in a room, Jesus appears and this group of folk are trying to come to terms with this supernatural happening. Some might say it wasn't surprising they were troubled, uncertain about what was going on, were having doubts. They must have been in such emotional turmoil. Jesus' next question is a request for something to eat, maybe to fulfil a practical need but perhaps to prove to the disciples that he was alive and not a figment of their imagination. They needed to be convinced of his resurrection so that they could fulfil the commission which they would be tasked with, to spread the message and speak of Jesus. In this passage, I believe Jesus is reiterating who he is and what his mission and purpose was. Verse 46 reminds us, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. I wonder if we had been among that group of disciples and friends, whether we would have more questions for Jesus. I'm sure I would have. I'd have wanted to know much more. Was Jesus going to stay around? What was going to happen next? I think as humans we often have lots of questions, particularly as we try to understand strange and difficult situations. We want to get our minds around the how, why, when. And this has been particularly apparent in this past year of pandemic. It started on a practical note. When will the shops have flour and eggs again? Moving on to how long will this all last? And then, when will we get the vaccine? Will it stop the spread of infections? Then the deeper questions. Why is this happening? Why is this happening to my family, some ask? Government and politicians are questioned. People ask questions of God. We don't always get the answers to our questions, but in our journeying with God, in our deepening relationship with him, we can be assured of his presence with us. The psalmist too asks lots of questions. From Psalm 4, Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give relief to my distress. Be merciful and hear my prayer. Then its ending is more positive, recalling that God has filled the psalmist's heart with a greater joy. 
when Jesus questioned the group in the upper room. He wanted them to remember who he was. He wanted them to believe and to be ready to take up their calling, to have faith, to trust. We can have that assurance that God is always with us in the different situations of life, in those situations we don't understand. But I also believe he challenges us to trust and have faith even when we can't see the road ahead. Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your minds? I wonder what other questions Jesus might be asking of us. What are the questions he is asking the church? What will our response be? We now have another short clip from Love This Calling, this week about the global church. My name is Barry Sloan and I'm a mission partner serving in Germany. I love this calling because I get to see how people here do life, do church and do mission in this part of the world in a different culture. I love this calling because I get to do mission. I get to leave the church building and go out in, outside into the community uh, to serve my neighbours. And I love this calling because it's all about partnership. A partnership between the Methodist Church in Ireland, the Methodist Church in Britain and my church here, the United Methodist Church in Germany. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you giving thanks for your sacrifice upon the cross. We celebrate the victory you won over death, your rising again and your presence with us now. We have remembered again the events of that first Easter and the way in which the disciples encountered you as you appeared to them in different situations. Lord, you challenged your followers to share the good news of who you are with all people and you continue to challenge us, your 21st century disciples, to serve you and share with others. Lord, help us to discern your calling in each of our lives. We recognise that you have given to each of us different gifts to use to promote your kingdom message. Help us to prayerfully consider your calling as individuals and as church in this new season. We thank you, Lord, for those who are called to take your gospel message to various parts of the world, and we pray for them as they fulfil their calling to you. Lord, in recent times we have seen violence erupt in various places in the world. We think of Myanmar, Northern Ireland, and of those people who are caught up in such violence. Lord, may constructive discussion prevail over acts of terror. Lord, bring your peace. We remember before you those who are poorly, those whose lives have been changed by unexpected illness and may be asking questions. Lord, bring your peace. Lord, whilst we continue to celebrate the events of Easter, we remember that there are those who are grieving and sad. We remember all who have lost a friend or a family member. Particularly at this time, we hold before you Elizabeth, our Queen, and the Royal Family, as they mourn the loss of Philip. Lord, bring your peace. And so we gather all our prayers together and ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We say together the traditional form of the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. joining with us in worship and thank you to all those who have been involved with contributing to the service. Let us pray. May the grace of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the love of God who raised him from the dead and the power of the Holy Spirit who fills the world with new life, bless us and keep us now and always. Amen. Thank you. 